welcome back. Welcome if you're new here. So today we're going to do a get ready with me, which is kind of stupid because I was going to get ready and then film, but I just can't. Today is one of the like first days that I feel like semi-human again after having been sick for so long. Let's just roll with it. Before we get into it, please make sure that you give this video a thumbs up, like it, leave a comment, subscribe, and if you have any questions or want me to make a video on a specific Ooh. topic, please leave a comment. And today we are actually going to talk about a subscriber comment that was left that asked me a question that I thought was a really, really good thing to answer. What should you do if you are manifesting? I'm just going to go general. This person I think asked about an SP, but just in general, what do you or should you do if you are manifesting and you're having some sort of setback? I mean, setback could look different for everybody. There's a couple things that we're going to discuss. So first and foremost, I think the most important thing about it is you need to realize that a setback is something that you personally define. So a setback to you might not be a setback to somebody else. Why? Perception. So you would really, really benefit from regardless of what is happening, not see it as a setback, but as progress of some sort. And this is where you would definitely benefit from gaslighting yourself as much as possible. Let's say you're dating somebody and you're trying to manifest a third party away and you want to manifest them for yourself. And all of a sudden they tell you that they moved in with the third party, right? This is not even something that you knew about. This just came literally out of nowhere. The way that I would tell a client of mine to deal with the situation would be to start affirming the following. This is awesome. They're now moving in with the third party because they're realizing that this is not really what they want. So they're now doing something, basically taking an action that might not be, or doesn't make sense maybe because they haven't dated long enough or whatever. So they're now taking action to try and save that relationship, but they're totally in panic mode, right? In total panic mode because they're realizing this might not be what I want. So this is like their last ditch effort to try and see if they can fix this or save this. And they will come to realize that there's nothing left and I'm the person that they want to be with. I mean, this is just the first example that came to mind, but do you see how that immediately shifts the way you feel about it? Because at the end of the day, everything that we feel and that we perceive and that we give meaning to, sweetheart, is something that we create, right? I mean, and this is, and I thought about this yesterday. True crime, right? True crime is something that is all up in your face everywhere. And I was watching um, a show about the Idaho murders. And I thought to myself, what would happen if none of us had gotten informed about them, about that murder? Did it actually happen? Who knows? It wouldn't, it wouldn't have happened in our reality. In our reality, that wouldn't have existed. But because we're being informed so much all the time about all these horrible things that are happening, we perceive, sorry, perceive our world to be a horrible, dangerous, and toxic place because that's what our brain is constantly being fed. So if something like this happens, we don't think from a rational standpoint. We always think from a worst case scenario standpoint. I'm sure your thought process was probably, oh my God, they're moving in, which means that my manifestations didn't work and now I'm screwed. So what do I do? Should I give up? I should probably give up because I tried before and it only backfired on me. But if you look at it from a perspective of, well, this is their last ditch effort and they're going to realize now that this ain't it, that gives you a completely different way of not only seeing it, but feeling about it. So one of the biggest mistakes that we make um, is the fact that we think that we have to be informed about anything and everything at all times. We are so trained and conditioned to always see the negative and be fed with the negative so much that every situation that we're confronted with, we immediately give a negative connotation to, which is 
going back to giving your interpretation of things. You shouldn't even be informed about this. If someone else informed you, cut them off. Tell them you don't want to hear about it, you're taking care of it or whatever, you don't care. Whatever you need to say in order to like get them off your back. If you're finding out about it because you're looking it up, what are you doing looking it up, right? Um, so there's this X Vine star, which I'm sure everybody knows what I'm talking about. And she's married, right? But her husband's ex-wife is someone who's very prominent. And it's kind of this like running joke that she consistently talks about this woman even though they've been separated for a long time. And yeah, they have kids, but I mean, their kids are grown. And she still keeps tabs on what the ex-wife is doing. She's posting about it. I even had a video of her and I don't follow her on my For You page this morning talking about it, right? Making some super, super snarky remark that was just unnecessary because nothing of the sort was ever discussed or voiced or whatever. And it just reminded me of, you know, manifesting because she's married to him. Like she shouldn't care what other people are saying, what other people are doing. And even if, let's just play devil's advocate and say that the ex-wife is in love with him, wants him back and wished that their marriage would fall apart so she could step in. If he hasn't expressed anything of that sort, if you know that you're stable and secure in your relationship, you wouldn't give two craps about what she says or what she does. Especially if you're consciously aware that you're the creator of your own reality. You wouldn't care about what someone else says or does because you know that your partner is loyal to you and is sticking with you and anybody can come along and say whatever they want or do whatever they want but your partner will stick with you no matter what i've seen comments that said that she's concerned apparently because he's already stepped out on her i don't know if that is true or not i really can't say i do know that she has quite the contentious relationship with his children which is never a good idea right which is why i always say do not manifest children away and if you can't handle it then leave but i can definitely tell you that her focus on the ex-wife and constantly knowing what she's up to is very very similar to knowing about setbacks in your manifestation they shouldn't matter to you if you are with your person already it you wouldn't care about any setback and outside of that if you are worried about setbacks now don't think that just because you get your person, and I'm just using person as an example, this works with anything, this works with money, this works with health, this works with like whatever you want. Don't think that that anxiety and those ruminating thoughts will go away. The only thing that will happen is that you then bring it into your relationship and potentially ruin your manifestation when you then have to do it all over again because you brought that in when there was no need for it, right? So let's say maybe they're out and about and they're coming home late and they didn't call you for whatever reason and you've been worried about a third party because you've manifested them away from a third party to you. Would you give them the opportunity to explain where they were or what they were doing or would you blow up on them and start a huge argument which would maybe cause them to leave again that's what you need to ask yourself and this is why so many people get really really upset when you kind of bring up the fact that manifesting is mostly about taking responsibility for yourself it's not your fault that in your childhood someone caused you trauma that made you untrustworthy or maybe a bad relationship made you untrustworthy but if you consistently bring your baggage into a relationship and are constantly bleeding on somebody that didn't cut you when are you gonna look in the mirror and say maybe it is me I would much rather much much rather face myself in the mirror and say crap i have some work to do but have all the power in the world to dictate my reality and the things that i want versus being able to give that responsibility to someone else and say there's nothing i can do i'm not responsible but then all of my power is gone and i'm literally at will of anybody and anything I, the choice is like pretty clear to me personally at the end of the day you need to address why you consider certain things a setback you need to ask yourself why am i even staying informed i shouldn't stay informed it doesn't matter and 
you need to really assess whether those setbacks could potentially be something that you would bring into the relationship once you do have your person and whether maybe you not having your person right now is a good thing because it gives you the opportunity to work on these things before you get them because if there's one thing that i can 100 tell you is when you have your person working on those things will be 20 times as hard really really take the time to use the setback as a compass to assess like okay wait a minute why did this happen though first i'm gonna give it a good meaning because i do want to give it a good meaning but you still need to take a step back and see and look like well but why did this actually happen to me what limiting belief am i holding that this even had the opportunity to manifest itself now last but not least um there is a technique that you can also use oh outside of that um i would also yeah let's go back to that first uh fix your affirmations too so if you are affirming in the present state i would definitely change that i would start manifesting in the past state so i would say i have been dating this person or this person has lived with me blah 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 whatever the beauty of that is is that so when we say i am living with this person i am dating this person you're telling your brain this is happening right now you need to take one look around your apartment and realize they're not so your brain is going to be like oh yeah you're making stuff up whatever we don't care if you however say i have been dating this person i have been living with this person this person has always been in love with me your ego will have a harder time fighting against that because it will be like well wait a minute okay you're saying that this did happen maybe this is a memory we su we suppressed maybe this is something we forgot but there's a chance that could have happened. Let's see if we can start pulling memories from that. And this is where visualization or repetition, regardless of which one you like to use, is so vital. Because now you have the, the door is open now, and now you have the opportunity to create a memory, a memory that doesn't exist, but who cares? Doesn't matter. Your brain can't differentiate. So now you're creating this memory of your person is living with you, your person is happy with you, blah, 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 whatever. And memories is what manifests right it pulls it pushes you forward easy more easily and it also takes away a lot of anxiety because you can always go back to that memory and really sit with it and breathe it and live it and feel it and know that this is my reality because i've lived this before and i'm gonna live it again it's so important to bring yourself into that timeline where you are already with your person regardless of what it takes. But telling your current version that is in a timeline where you don't have your person that you are in this timeline where you have them, that's just counterintuitive in and of itself. Your brain knows you're bullshitting it. And unless you're willing to really amp up those affirmations to the point where you're almost like gaslighting yourself on a daily basis, like eight hours a day, which nobody has time for that, you don't need to make your life any harder than it already is. State them in the past, Whatever you can state it in the past. If you have to state something in a current state, try to at least embellish it with affirmations that are in the past and go from there. The last one that we're going to talk about today is revision. Now, I'm going to tell you the pros and cons of why I have a love-hate relationship with revision. But when it comes to things that have already happened, if you know anything about manifestation, your first immediate thought is probably, let's just go and revise that. Sorry, had to change locations. So revision. When it comes to revision, the problem that I have, okay, so first of all, let's talk about the positives maybe. The positive is, is that you can fix a situation that has already happened. You can change basically the trajectory of whatever is connected to it. You can even do that into the past, into something that has like already happened like a long, long time ago. Like at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how far back you want to go. Revision is something you can just go crazy with if you want, which is a beautiful thing for sure. I mean, I've used revision before and I've told the story a million times for someone who accidentally, de accidentally deleted something off of his computer that was not, you know, fixable or whatever. And we revised it and then about five minutes or 10 minutes later, it was back. And it was back in an even better state than it was before. So I really like to tell this story just because it, the person was so in disbelief. When it comes to bigger things, one of the things that I worry about are two things. The first is we don't always know 
or can foresee the long-term consequences of changing whatever it is that we're changing. Because if you revise it, you not only revise that particular situation, you revise everything that happened as a result of that particular situation. So we don't know what that would look like. And as someone who is a little bit of a worry word sometimes, it, that is something that definitely does bother me. Second of all, sometimes things need to happen in order to teach us a lesson, in order to bring our manifestation forward. Sometimes these things happen on purpose, which is why it's so important to give them a good meaning, right? If you give them a bad meaning, even though the universe might have intended for it to actually be a positive thing and it's actually part of your manifestation, which could come around at any second, you never know, you might be actively interfering with the process that the universe that you co-create with has chosen as the most appropriate way to bring your desires in. It also definitely, in my personal opinion, can interfere with learning your lesson, taking accountability just in general. But at the end of the day, a setback is really only showing you what you still need to work on or what you're worried about or whatever. And like I said, I mean, at the end of the day, you need to decide for yourself whether this is a risk you want to take um, or whether you can maybe find a way to get over it or give it a better meaning because to me personally things like sorry things like trauma and stuff like is in my personal opinion something worth revising things that really destroy your life and haunt you and not the kind of stuff that made you who you are today i'm talking about like really really bad stuff again there's also limits to it i know there's people who can say you can revise absolutely anything it's not something i would want to mess with or even try to touch because we don't know what that would mean at the end of the day just keep that in mind because i get i get this question more often than you think nothing that you would consider a small setback should be harmful enough for you to want to abandon your manifestation which you should never abandon it you should never ever give up because it can be literally right around the corner i always tell you guys this a setback is in my personal opinion a beautiful thing a really handy thing a thing that can help you unearth things a thing that can help you train to see things in a better light and i'm not talking about like toxic positivity and making everything like hunky dory and everything like unicorns and whatever like you're allowed to feel your pain if you're upset about the setback you can feel that allow yourself to feel that there's nothing wrong with it give yourself some time to be upset and feel those feelings this is more about trying to see the good in it to not let a situation good or bad right go to waste this is about making something bad into something good that you can learn from which is like i said why revision is something that I wouldn't necessarily immediately jump to. And toxic positivity is more along the lines of, well, everything's great and I'm not accepting the bad or seeing the bad or even acknowledging it or only having to have your affirmations be positive and stuff like that. I'm not talking about that. If you are in a place where you can accept the setback for what it is, but still know that you will manifest moving forward like regardless and that you will not let this deter you in any way and you just take it as a sign to maybe change your affirmations or amp them up a little bit and just say them more or change something in the way you act as if and just want to learn your lesson that's great too that's a that's an amazing way to approach this i would never tell you not to do that and this is also something you should definitely always assess whether you whenever you have a setback like how severe is it and how much does it affect me and can i figure out a way to handle it the way it is if toxic positivity works for you then that's great just be careful with it first of all don't put it on anybody else that can be really stressful that there's something called like a happiness bully Maybe I'll make like a completely separate video about it again. And still try and acknowledge negative feelings, feel them and understand that they're there for a reason because they're there to help us learn things about ourselves and about the world and just help us navigate 
things from a different perspective because my grandma always said to me if we wouldn't go through pain we wouldn't even know what we want because how are you supposed to know what you want if everything that you can have is happy and great there again a compass and a guiding sign for you to figure out and understand like oh i don't like this so this is not what i want so maybe let me go in a different direction and the last thing i want to say about this is if you do have a setback and regardless of how like minor or major it is and it immediately makes you feel like you just want to give up and you don't want your manifestation anymore um or you want to try and manifest something else that is also a sign that may be a good place to then sit down and assess what you're dealing with how you feel about it and whether maybe you gave that particular manifestation or desire more weight than it needed to have. And this could be a way of your higher self telling you, you know what, you can have it, but we got better in store for you. Don't waste your time over here. Come over here. We have something big waiting for you that you're gonna love, that is gonna be so much better for you. And this is the thing, the voices that you hear, right? Your quote unquote guides. I do believe that they're guides to an extent, but I'm also firmly of the belief, and I've said this a couple times before, that the inner voice that we hear as a guide is just us in a different realm, right? Us in a different timeline. It's the version of us that has already lived life to the fullest and has literally gotten everything we wanted. Because remember, a desire that you have only comes to you because there is a you that already has the desire and already knows that you're more than capable of getting it which is why you want it in the first place right and that voice is trying to help you get there if that's what you choose to want to pursue so listen to your gut listen to your inner voice there's so many people who have that inner voice save their lives and that voice won't harm you okay if you have a gut feeling listen to it follow it don't ignore it don't think it's something that you're making up this is your higher self trying to help you and if that voice is telling you negative things or has negative intentions you need to be careful with that okay because i don't think that your higher version would ever tell you something negative that's your ego that's programming right that's societal programming those kinds of things but that's never your inner guidance system because it will want nothing but the best for you and to guide you towards your dream life anyway i'm sorry that this was a little bit of a long one and a little bit of a rambly one but i hope this answered your question i hope this maybe answered some other questions as well and yeah i will see you guys in the next one bye guys